Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Shaping Africa podcast. Today I'm joined by Bright Gameli, um, who is a cybersecurity specialist, uh, a real techie and technologist, and I'm really delighted to have this conversation today. Um, particularly dwelling around how he ended up in South Korea (laughs) (laughs) and what he's been up to since being back on the African continent. So welcome to the show, right? Thank you. Yeah. So we'll just get straight into it. How on earth did you get to South Korea? By by accident. Okay. Let me tell you something. So it was, so after undergrad, I started working at a company called Cellulant, um, which is everybody knows Cellulant. in the first year after that, my dad went to South Korea for a conference. Interesting. So he's in a, he is the church kind of business. He's not a pastor. He's a finance person in the church business. So the conference in Christianity is really big in South Korea. Mm. So he went there. There were about 4,000 people at the one conference. And he kept on bumping into this one guy. Every time he goes for lunch, dude is there. Mm-hmm. At the same, the different service stations. He switches to here another station at another day. Same dude. He's like, no. This is the third time we're meeting. There has this to him. He feels there has to be some sort of a connection. So they, he's called Professor Young. Uh-huh. Professor Young. They met. They chit chat, and then they said, look, I think my son wants to do his masters in South Korea. I had never ever thought of a country like South Korea to actually go there to study or to do anything there. Like it's never crossed my mind, you know. Mm-hmm. So I said, all right, you know what? So he, Professor Young now connected me to a guy called Professor Park. Okay. Can you imagine, right after he connected us, and I wrote to Professor Park, he sent me the details of what I need to do to be able to get the scholarship and everything. Professor Young disappeared. For the past, for, for four years that I've been in South Korea, I have never met this man. Really? Emails no. bounced, phone calls bounced. Uh, we used something called Kakao. Kakao is like, what's up in the Asian community? Right. Bounced. Nothing. Wow. This guy's a ghost. He doesn't exist. Even I went to look at the lab where he was teaching. Dude is not there. Like, wow. I'm like, what kind of? Okay, I call him an angel. Right. Because <laughs> he just gave me an opportunity to go study my masters. Right. And yeah, it was quite interesting. Yeah. So yeah. what was life like in South Korea? It was very shocking. First of all, I went at the time when it was in August. Mm-hmm. That was the, the how do you call it, summertime. Mm-hmm. In South Korea, uh, for, it's usually about seven months cold <laughs> in South Korea. So that August was really hot. I got there day one on a sat- on a Sunday. There was no flight list to go there, and a Korean Air just launched. So first of all, taking a flight there was twelve hours in the air. I was dying, and there were only like I think over ten of us in the airplane. <laughs> we went so. Pretty interesting experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, my professor picked me up. We stayed, and then the, the day after that, he said he's traveling to the states. Mm-hmm. So he's leaving to the United States for one year as an exchange program, uh, a financial program. So he's the one who speaks the best English, and mm-hmm. he's introduced me to other people who were speaking a little bit of broken English, and I'm not used to that. So I had to start learning a whole new environment. Korea is usually clean by day and at night dirty (laughs) because a lot of party that goes on and everything yeah oh it's a party town you have no idea had no idea oh yeah korea is a complete party town they're the most alcohol consumers in the world wow they're a a, a small bottle of what you call soju Mm. which is 25 percent goes for 100 shillings a dollar wow beer goes for two dollars and that's a two liter like, you know how you buy Fanta in the shops? Mm. That's how easy it is to be accessed. Wow. So I did started the, my lessons and uh, my master's supposed to take uh, 26 credits. And that 20, no, 24 credits, that's going to be for a two-year program. Mm-hmm. In the first year, the culture shock hit me so hard because this guy is studying crazy. The forever studying. Mm-hmm. So I had to finish all of that. I finished my entire course in a year. But my professor came in the second year, so I had to also start again. I to excuse me to do his classes so i overdid my credits ended up doing 42. so i overstudied but it was interesting because i'm learning anything and everything from artificial intelligence Mm -hmm. to gsm technology Mm -hmm. to geographical spaces to software development project management name it cyber security in all aspects of things so i was really learning a lot comes the social part of things you have to the first week 
I was really trying to learn how to, I was now at the school, the school on campus hostel. Mm -hmm. And I was really trying to just to get to know people and everything. Met a guy from Fiji. And the Fiji guy took me out to go shop for basic soda, for things that I can buy around, right? Then I met other people from from Spain, from Sweden, from a whole so it's a whole international community. We decided to step out. Right after the school is 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 a wholesome city. Clubs everywhere. And the weirdest thing happened to me on the first night. Mm -hmm. Got to a club, it's just a small shop. The guy's like, hi, my name is Johnny, come in. I'm like, what? It's like, I have something for you. It's called I Hate Johnny. Okay. It's a shot. <laughs> Whatever was the content of that shot. So I was trying to be bright, eh? Mm. Trying to be very nice. <laughs> I bought all that shot for about seven of us. That was expensive, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And I didn't I wasn't really doing the calculation of currency. So I spent a lot of money. Spent a thousand dollars in a weekend. Wow. One weekend. Wow. When I called my dad for extra cash, like, what? You can't spend a thousand dollars because I wasn't working, so I didn't have money. After I drinking I hate Johnny, that content was quite uh, a, a, a percentage mm. got us wasted the next place we went to was a very nice club which was playing hip-hop because koreans are very pop kind of right. culture yep. so they don't do hip-hop but there's some people who actually when they do hip-hop they dress hip-hop i see they dress like americans mm. they they start speaking like americans they try to so they have that kind of kind of slang go to the club and we're all dancing and everything and the first culture shock hit me my friends are in front of me we're dancing and somebody slapped my ass. So you're just there like... African dude. And <laughs> my bum has just been... What's going on? Later to realize it's a common thing oh. with them. They are too attached... Not, not too attached with their feminine side. Mm. But you see two men walking and they're not gay. Mm -hmm. They're holding hands and mm. hugging each other and everything. And they're not gay. It's just how they are. Mm. So you see guys and ladies, I mean, a man and a lady will dress the same way and guess what? They're actually just dating, that's how they are. Mm -hmm. So they dress like a lady, but he's not gay at all. Right. So it's, that culture shock took a while to get out, to get me out of things. Mm -hmm. But fast forward to a few, I mean, the pressure is already there. Crazy studying, it's, it's just madness. Mm -hmm. I'm always reading. Mm -hmm. I have to write papers. I have to publish the papers. I have to present the papers. Of course, because it's your master's. It's yeah. my master's. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to make extra money. Mm -hmm. There comes the discrimination. You are African, you cannot teach. English teaching was the easiest job you can get in Korea. If you teach English, you're fine. Mm -hmm. You'll get a job easily. You'll be mm -hmm. paid at least if you are an American or a European who's from English background, you're paid 30 to $40 an hour. If you're an African, first of all, you're not allowed to teach. You cannot, you can teach if you're from South Africa. If you're from any other country but South Africa, you're risking your life because <laughs> you might be jailed or deported and paying $10,000. If you do that, you're usually paying about $20 an hour. Mm -hmm. So we are discriminated against. So I'll do interviews, people are telling me, oh my God, I love your voice and your energy. Oh, I love you, can you just come? Oh, where are you from? Ghana. Oh, sorry, oh, Ghana, 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 no, 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 Ghana Saram, no. Mm -hmm. Saram is, is person. Like Ghana, we don't want Ghana person because you are not what they wanted. Mm -hmm. It's an exactly a regulation in the country. So a lot of things such as him is depressing because mm. you know you can do the job, you want to make course, extra money, but yeah. you're favoring anybody else but you. It's, you're fully colonized yeah. in another way, mindset. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to risk my, my, my life to work in those kind of jobs, mm -hmm. English teaching jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, the, but the one time it was really difficult for me to get a job over the holidays. So what do I result to? Working with the place where we all hate factories mm -hmm. so my boy and i he's from niger but he lived in kenya for his entire life mm -hmm. so it's called musa musa and i went to look for jobs and there's actually a place when you go there they look for all the legal jobs for you all of them wow <laughs> any job that africans or other people can know from not from non english speaking countries right. you can get the jobs there so we were given a, a, a factory job to do we're making shoes and that thing is so dangerous mm -hmm. telling you if you're supposed to put a kind of a socks on a metal. If you close it in two minutes, the socks, the shoe is done, a boot. Then you rip it to the side and then you take it off. Right. You're doing that the whole night. 
if you make a mistake and actually slam it on your finger, it cuts off immediately. It's not like Whoa. you don't you don't even feel it. I don't think you will feel it. Yeah, yeah. Because it's that, that happened quick. to actually a Kenyan. Whoa. A Kenyan who did that. So they had to do grafting and right. tie I mean, to to stitch his fingers to his skin mm -hmm. or to his uh, thigh. Mm -hmm. So that has been happening. So we thought we got a job that night, went out to eat, and now yes, comes in the second shock. Beef is expensive. Really? Ha, a small portion of beef that you get in Kenya for even a thousand shillings, you know. There, the minimum you get is four thousand. We were not aware, or rather, I was not aware. We went eating, ate so much, and Musa, I'm like, Musa, okay, it's time to pay. He's like, okay, he only has about a thousand shillings, and I have 500 bob. We've eaten for more than six thousand shillings. Now, where do we get the money? <laughs> So we decided to stay in that restaurant for an extra two hours because we are not making phone calls. Right. We don't have internet. We, the, our airtime was finished. We had to now start looking for Wi-Fi. One person goes out, look for Wi-Fi again, calls another person to be able to actually send us money. Mm -hmm. So it took us four hours to leave a restaurant where we ate and we're done a very long time ago. Wow. So that whole thing is just, I'm like, back home, this is cheap back yeah. home being because i'm from ghana but yeah. i've lived in kenya my entire life so yeah. kenya is my second home it's so cheap mm -hmm. why is it such a difficult thing mm -hmm. the next day we've been told uh good morning sorry you cannot come for the job at night because you're too tall what you're too tall for the machine i'm like but i can do the job it was right. working we tried it it was working right. we're too tall so now here's case we are broke which resulted to a very interesting job that i had to do and i need to save water before this one <laughs> Um, so we got another job from the same company okay. and the job was to work in a rubber factory <laughs> and by rubber I mean a sex toy factory we're making dildos okay cut a shock again you gotta do what you gotta do <laughs> yeah, yeah you need to make the money mm -hmm. and you make so I was a filler I was filling dildos basically the dildo comes <laughs> the different types so the, the type that came to my department <laughs> sounds weird like a job <laughs> That comes to my department, you press a button with your feet, it comes, you press another one, it fails. You have to shake the top, <laughs> <laughs> then you let it go. Right. Then somebody else had to do the shaping, the cutting of the top before mm. he seals. Mm. So that was a very interesting kind of job. But I was doing that. I still have to write papers. I still have to make sure that I read, I have to pass exams. And I was a straight student, by the way. And one thing which I had to, I stopped that dildo thing for after two days, I just couldn't take it. Right. Um, and I resulted, so I started creating computer viruses to sell underground. Oh. That is, was the job that I did. Made some few cash. Then some, some of the papers that I, I presented, somebody saw me and said, we are part of a, I mean, one of the intelligence agencies and we'll love you to just consult for us. Mm -hmm. They will not tell me which one. Later they did, which I can't mention for confidentiality's sake. Mm -hmm. And my job was to research. These guys literally pay me 50,000 Kenya shillings for one meeting. One meeting can be two minutes, can be three minutes. Maximum, if it goes past an hour, they pay you extra. They pay mm -hmm. you double. Mm -hmm. If it goes one hour, one minute, it's actually timed. They pay you twice. So that became the way I was trying to now legitimately live my life when I realized that my skills can actually be used to make money. Mm -hmm, and I started mm -hmm. applying for jobs online uh, to do consultancy services, which um, I was doing a lot of consultancy for Kenyan companies. Mm. Uh, Ushahidi. Oh, from over there? Yeah. Okay. Ushahidi being uh, oh, the key one. Okay. Ushahidi gave me about 20 projects that I had to do. Amazing. 20 startups in Africa who needed cybersecurity services. Mm -hmm. So I was helping them, but I was mm -hmm. also learning at the same time. Mm -hmm. Became now the way. But I started getting interested in speaking events because every presentation I do, I speak, people are like, what? You've done so well. This is so cool. Mm -hmm. Like, the respect started coming to me as an African. Mm -hmm. One of the, fir the first one that I went for called Eighth Asia's Joint Information Security Conference in 2013. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget that. I was the first black person they've ever seen at the conference, or rather who made it to that paper. And it was an IEEE paper and IEEE is well respected for it the is. as an organization right, right. and after I presented they were like we want you ever since then they get I get invitations every two months mm -hmm. until today mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I get invitations since 2013 until today 
I still get invitations every two months mm -hmm. to submit a paper. Mm -hmm. Then I started becoming a peer reviewer of papers and be able to actually critique others, which I felt to me was a victory for me as an African who is out there wandering around trying to speak. Yeah. One event we they invited me for called CodeGate conference, what biggest cybersecurity conference mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. You learn everything, lock picking, <laughs> like they literally teach you how to do lock picking, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how to break doors, how to break into wire system, camera system, disabling of, of alarm systems, then the real hacking and everything. It was really fun. So I was a judge. This guy paid me four and five thousand dollars to speak for 30 minutes. Wow. And I'm like, if I do this twice a week, <laughs> So my life is sorted, even twice a month. Yeah. You know, you're sorted. That's what I started realizing the opportunities out there that we're not taking the advantage of. The value of who you are and what is mm. in your brain is so much more that I was making myself look small. Totally. So those kind of things, so those conferences that I go for, I try to speak. Um, currently, as I talk to you right now, I've done 162 pres uh, cybersecurity presentations. Wow. And I keep counting. Those are the ones that I can remember. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's some which I know must have slipped under the carpet. I mm -hmm. can't remember them. Mm -hmm. So I try to do that to just help myself to learn new things and the value of who I am and what I can do. Yeah. Um, I'm not the best. I don't consider myself the best, but I think I'm good enough in a specific area mm -hmm. that I can do that. Then I got invited by the National, um, National Cyber Security Organization to help um, teach at a place called BOB, Best of the Best. They teach the best young brains in the entire country, okay. six months crash course. This is still in South Korea? South Korea still. Wow. To be able to use that as a way. All of this are coming back to Kenya, by the way. So everything I'm learning, mm -hmm. how can I do that in Kenya? Mm -hmm. Same thing. Mm -hmm. They teach them, they get to become really good at what in any area of cybersecurity in four corners, and they get hired by the government. So again, all of those things, like, to me, I feel like it was an honor because started off by working in that whole rubber factory. I work in an LG factory, trying to make TV stands for LG. It's tiring. Mm. For 12 hours, the only thing you're getting is coffee. Coffee, 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 coffee. And you're dipping rubbers in um, the TV stands, which are plastic. Correct. Acid, acid, water, and you hook. Yeah. Trust me, by the time you get to the fourth hour, your arms are dead. Mm. So. Why do they let such people do the job? So it took a while before they started accepting we Africans to be able to do things. Yeah. But all of these, I said, you know what? If I can't do that job, there has to be another way. Mm -hmm. I'm an entertainer, technically. So clubs allow foreigners to get it for free. Okay. And they let locals pay. Okay. Because we, they, they started realizing that we, the foreigners, attract the Koreans to come. So, I go to clubs, I don't carry money. What? I would do anything. And I'll show you a video. <laughs> I was an MC. Really? Yep. I was an MC. I'm the MC. I rap every song that I come because yeah. I love this music. Even if I don't know the words, I will blubber things and people <laughs> think I know. It was such a fun thing. And I used to organize a dance battle on um, Fridays in a club. So, dance battling happens every, I do it every month, once, at least one month. And the last people have to battle me just for fun. Yeah. Then I started doing a, some. It have a lot of cafes, so the cafes basically want to have English, um, English Korean exchange. Mm -hmm. So foreigners come there to learn um, English, and then we the English started learning Korean. It's a whole nice exchange. So I became a manager of one of them during the holidays. I'm like, why not? Let me see what this have to offer. <laughs> so I'm the DJ. And DJ, I don't mean, I, I don't know how to mix. I basically play <laughs> mixes, playlists, mm -hmm. and I started learning the science of music and, 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 and the hearing. Mm -hmm. So when it's 7 p.m., so I said between 7 p.m. and uh, 11, you can drink all you can drink, all you can drink of the house mm -hmm. for 3,000, no, for 2,000 bob. 2,000 shillings, drink all you can. Mm. But we are buying the drinks are very they're cheap. Mm. So a whole bottle that right. can serve about four people in a cocktail goes for 200 shillings. But nobody knows. No one cares. Mm -hmm. And we buy so many of those and we're mixing for guys. So when you're drinking, so the first one hour you're drinking so hard, then I introduce shots. But the shots that I give you, I increase the music as well. And I had to read the science. When you increase the volume, your energy gets boosted. But what do I do? bring another shot after 30 minutes then include and then introduce a jello shots jello shots are sugar 
so your sugar gets to boost you so high anything i tell you to do you do it so i started raising frogs and eels yes <laughs> yeah, i built a whole table so i said people bet on the frogs right. <laughs> or you bet on eels or crabs sometimes some days i erase crabs yeah and people are putting 200 shillings 200 shillings 300 shillings everybody the guys are shouting yeah but i'm saying when you finish you have to do a dancing competition for those who've won from there i'll give a tequila bottle that tequila bottle is cheap it's about a thousand shillings but people think it's an mm. expensive one mm. and i said ah, can you just share with everybody you're already drunk at that point what you do do you want to share yeah. mm. so again more shots and when everybody <laughs> finish i take them to now the club mm. which is the club club mm. called, called club ghetto <laughs> that was a very very interesting name another club called blue monkey very close to each other mm -hmm. those guys know me so well that by one if i don't show up they can give out my corner i had a vip spot and i don't buy drinks so in that case saving money because I don't want to get broke, mm -hmm. I don't have money, right. and I use that whole experience to be able to make sure people have a good time. Yeah. People, all Kenyans, all foreigners, I even created a Facebook page. You send your music oh, playlists wow. uh, way in advance, so I let the DJ have the music. We play uh, how the Kikuyu songs in the club. <laughs> yes, <laughs> people are playing Kikuyu songs that we hold each other and follow the whole of the ways, and they love it. So that's the experience they want. So I'm like, yeah. what? create an experience for them that they don't they're not used to yeah. so korea was such a very interesting mm. place but the depression that i was going through was real mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i was forever drinking every weekend it became too much yeah because that's the only escape you have right. you you don't yeah. know what to do yeah. the other only thing i can do to escape is to go hiking mm -hmm. so you go hiking and you can't travel too much because yeah. you don't have money yeah and but it's really got to me fast forward i came back to kenya okay uh so i finished the masters so remind me i overdid the credits I came i took a flight came back home and my dad was like you're not done you're going back for your phd yeah, I i'm like, like i thought you did a phd yeah i'm like i'm 26 yeah, why am so i doing a phd <laughs> why do why could i just wait until i'm maybe 40 and i do because people who do phd are 40. he said no go back so i said okay i'll go back so I had to call everybody who I sold stuff to that please return the stuff I sold to you because uh, I'm coming back. So I gave money back to people, took my stuff back, got my room back because I moved off campus. But another reason why I didn't want to go back was a tragedy happened. Mm -hmm. I lost my roommate oh, to what? drowning. Oh, when we were both going to learn how to swim, mm -hmm. I, I traveled. Mm -hmm. He went ahead to learn how to swim and traveled to Austria, I think. Okay for a conference and he's too jovial so when he was actually calling for help nobody listened to him really? so he drowned right in front of people wow. very most diligent a guy who has never cussed in his life never Ghanaian and we were the leaders of the international community mm. because when international day comes him and I are dancing mm. we used to just we need to make people have a good mm -hmm. time because that's mm -hmm. we just love that mm -hmm. so that's really hit me hard mm. that's why i never wanted to go back to korea right, right but hey it's an opportunity for me to go back and get my phd so i went the phd requires you to do 36 credits mine was reduced to 30. Mm -hmm. and those 30 you're only allowed to normally do a maximum of six and by six i mean those are two classes mm -hmm. in a week mm -hmm. three hours each and you have to write a paper for those two right you have to research every thursday you have to research on a topic you have to present to the faculty every thursday every thursday but well, that was part of the masters as well mm -hmm. so intense. it's intense so you are not just idle you have to read something new you have to learn something you have published i think 14 papers i don't know where some of them are <laughs> and um some i never published i wrote them i like them but they didn't make my standard so i keep them on the side mm -hmm. so i finished i did i did 10 um, credits a semester so 10 10 10 one and a half years i was done oh i started my research paper from the beginning of the of the phd course i knew exactly what i wanted to do okay so the two years finished my 30 credits and interesting thing about korea you cannot finish a master's without repeating three exams you've done before at one go phd is five Whoa. you have to receive no, no you haven't failed them you passed but you have to repeat it's called the graduation exam really you choose three courses that you've done from three different departments and redo them 
at once in one sitting. So you have I over see. five hours. I see. And you cannot cheat. If you go to the washroom, they'll call somebody to mm -hmm. come walk you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you go to the toilet, since they are very free with their sexuality, you open the door, you can't. So you know you wouldn't even feel the need to ever take a poop if you want to. <laughs> it's that bad. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that was generally my life in Korea. But interesting people, it, it's I think after the first two years, people became now a lot of us became so much there. Right. That they were very free with us, mm -hmm. um, inviting us to places, and they're very much on time. That's the best thing mm. I think I've ever learned. I cannot be late for anything because mm -hmm. Koreans are everything sometimes yeah so yeah interesting place though wow i'm so glad you shared your struggles at least in the beginning because yeah. i think a lot of times people here like you know you have a scholarship mm -hmm. and um they imagine this like very beautiful life or whatever because you have a scholarship yeah and they don't envision you know how they're gonna have pocket money or yep yeah because your parents will support you but there's also a place for you to support yeah. yourself <laughs> it's not cheap yeah and it's well. not cheap yeah. yeah yeah so so thank you for being so open about thank you all the crazy jobs <laughs> um and you know anyone in the diaspora we've all done them yeah <laughs> <laughs> i always tell like i i, I want to give a talk at naivas um to like the management trainee class and yes. i was like this is how my journey in retail started <laughs> and i was like this is my school and i worked at, like at, a, at the grab and go it was like yeah you know where if you didn't have time to sit in the dining hall you came to a grab and go and like make your quick sandwich so i was the cashier oh. but that was a promotion <laughs> what? because before i was like literally in the kitchen washing I don't know what the English word is. Like sufurias at what twice my height and my, I was like I would like almost fall in. What? <laughs> like while I was like trying to get to the bottom of these things and it's like And people think it's actually that easy yeah. when you go out there because and you see, I blame social media as yeah. well. When we were there, Instagram was not a thing, mm. was it really? No, it no. was more Snapchat yeah. and Facebook. Okay. We only posted the nice pictures. <laughs> I was I was a little Curated. bit pumped at the time, so yeah. I used to flex all my, my muscles and everything. And I was like, oh my god! And I'm like, hey, if only you yeah. knew what the what what we're going through. Yeah, it was so. But we only, and it's it's a thing that part of my PhD research I studied that as well, mm. with, which is cognitive reasoning. Mm. It actually messes up with your head. Mm -hmm. So currently is where I'm seeing it that a lot of people on social media you think are living a particular life, they're not living that life. Yeah. It's actually really difficult for mm. them. But out there, that's the thing. We only show people the good times, the great times, mm -hmm. but never the struggles. Yeah. yeah. Let me tell you, before I came back, I was overqualified mm -hmm. and underexperienced. I see. Getting a job. Yeah. Oh God, I applied to more than 60 jobs mm -hmm. worldwide. Mm -hmm. Every rejection letter just kept on coming. So I used to cry almost daily. I'm in tears. Yeah. So I'll cry before I go to the lab because the lab is a job. You're literally going to an office right. to work, right. which is in the school. Right. So you, I'm just crying. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I keep on applying. Am I not that yeah. good as yeah. I thought and I was? Qualified. I'm qualified. Yeah. Yeah. And my contract with Oshahidi ended and everything, but I, I paid see. rent for, the, for, for a while, you know. So I was not really worried about rent, but I can't keep on showing my parents also that I need to depend on them again. Yeah. And I'm almost 28. So it was, it was tough and mm. we only showed that good side. So everybody who lived outside, most of the time only showed the really nice yeah. dinners and yeah. everything they're going yeah. for. But True. the struggles that yeah. are going through there and emotional torture is yeah. just, it's crazy. It's, it is. It's and people difficult. have money, you don't. Yep. Other students have money, mm -hmm. you don't. Mm -hmm. Money is always, the, I think, the denominator for. Totally. Yeah. So yeah. we had to learn how to do things. Yeah. But hey. I'm, I'm actually happy that I brought that back to Kenya to be able to live a different life yeah. and change a few things here and there. 